Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we are going to be assembling the Game Shell. Now, I have done a video on this in the past. Game Shell uh, contacted me and said that they would like to sponsor a video. So I'm gonna be doing uh, two videos on this. The first one is gonna be an assembly guide for the hardware, and the second one will be out a little bit later on for software. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So the game shell that I reviewed in my previous video was actually the Kickstarter version. This is the one that you would now get if you bought on the website. Um, here it is, it comes down in this awesome kind of um, file type um, design which looks really, really nice. I'll put the price up on the screen right now. Um, it's definitely a very affordable price uh, considering um, how high quality this thing is. Essentially, it's a tiny little uh, Linux computer in your pocket. You can connect to it to your phone, uh, you can connect to your, your internet online, you can plug it directly into your computer. There's loads of different things you can do, but we'll talk about software and whatnot in the next video. Let's crack on inside this box. So, inside, uh, there's this really, really nice kind of modular design. Um, you have um, some little plastic pieces here. It's all kind of like a model kit. Buying this um, built would be one thing, but building it yourself is another one. And it's also not very hard to build at all. It's probably one of the easiest um, kits out there to build um, in terms of computers and whatnot. You've also got your instruction manual, uh, some stickers if you want to customize your game shell, and of course the uh, cases for the actual modules themselves. So let's go ahead and open up all of the different boxes and see what we have inside. So they've actually sent me the yellow um, game shell, which I think looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks quite similar to the old DMG. So there's uh, the black shell, it's kind of a smoky black. There's one with uh, Lego pieces on the back, um, and that's for your LNR triggers. And then there's one with nothing on the back if you um, probably aren't gonna be playing with your LNR triggers, but you can also map them to the, um, the two up here as well. So you still play your SNES and Game Boy Advance games. In here, we have some more plastic pieces. It looks like we have like a dark gray. There we go, that's a nice dark gray kind of um, play it loud DMG style. It will go very, very nicely with that shell. And we've also got the um, LNR module as well uh, and the back pieces which click on. And then there's your rubber membranes. Uh, this looks like our screen and our battery potentially. There we go, there's our screen. And what else is in here? Uh, so we've got two motherboards and our screen. And last but not least, we have, this has got to be the uh, power modules, surely. Um, okay, so, right, am I, So now it is time to assemble your clockwork game shell. So get all of the components laid out on the table in front of you. And the first thing we're gonna be doing is removing each of these little plastic boxes from their packaging. So for this, you will need um, some little cutters. Um, you can use maybe a knife as well if you're really, really careful, but it's advised that you use cutters. Now each one has a corresponding front piece and a back piece, and they basically just hinge together. You wanna to make sure that you've cleaned up all of the, uh, the little plastic bits that you've chopped off. Um, not that you're gonna see it, but it will just help everything close um, together a little bit better. Obviously this piece right here is the screen, and there's a corresponding back piece which actually says screen on the inside. So basically what you do is you take the two and you just simply pop it together and it will just 
go together like that and then you have your nice little um, box here and that's ready for the uh, screen to be dropped in. So let's go ahead and do that for all of them and just get it ready. And there we go, we now have five little capsules. There is an optional one as well for the um, buttons on the back, but we'll be talking about that one in the next video because there is gonna be two parts of this software and hardware. So let's go ahead and take the screen out of the packaging and we're actually gonna start assembling this now. One of the things I noticed when I did my review on this is that the screen is an incredibly, incredibly high quality, which is a very, very important uh, part of having a uh, console, a handheld console, which you're, which you're probably gonna be spending a lot of time looking at. So this only has one way of going in, so you need to be very, very careful. You take the screen, you slightly fold the cable around the back, and the cable just comes out of the side. There's a little notch, which I'll show you in a second. And then there's two little posts at the top which the screen just kind of uh, slides into like that. And then you can go ahead and close up your little box. Now, obviously all of this is um, kind of reversible. You can take it apart if it's not sitting properly. So the next thing to do is remove the main board from the packaging, and then we can locate our little uh, container for it. And this can obviously only go in one way because there's a button and a headphone port at the bottom of that one. And that one, I believe, just kind of sits in like so. There's four little posts on either corner for it to go onto. And then you can just close up the little box. And uh, you'll begin to get into a little bit of a routine of doing this, it's quite simple. So let's do the keypad next. So we take out the boards and you take your keypad container. And exactly the same as the other ones, this just sits on top of the four little posts in either corners and closes up very, very nicely, just like that. And then we can set that one to the side. Next up, we've got the battery. Now this one goes in exactly the same as all of the others, except obviously you need to remember to put the battery in as well. And it just kind of slots in very, very nicely and then closes up as like all of the other ones. So next up is the speaker. Now in this little bag, there's two tiny thin boards. The one with the multiple buttons on it is for the um, back piece if you wanna have LNR triggers. But if you take out the other board right here, which actually says speaker on it, and you take your little uh, speaker container, this one just slots in on four little posts, exactly the same as the others, with the connector pointing downwards. And then if we open up this bag right here and pour out the contents, there are two tiny, tiny, tiny little speakers. So in order to get the speaker to work, you need to peel off the little back sticky part that's on the top, and then you press it very, very gently into the top little slot that is actually cut out for your speaker, just like that. When you close it up, the pressure will press the two little contacts against each other, and then you'll have yourself a functioning speaker. There we go, nice little speaker there uh, for the bottom, which looks rather cool. So once we've got these done, we're pretty much ready to continue on to the next part, which is assembly. So we're gonna take out the little included 16 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra something fancy um, SD card and slot that in to the micro SD card port on the back of the main board and uh, we won't need to take that out much because this thing operates over Wi-Fi, which is rather cool. And then we're gonna take the uh, screen and pop that in. In order to put the screen in, I would actually take the, uh, the motherboard out and just press it in, and then these little, uh, this little latch actually just folds over and keeps everything nice and pressed in like that. So then we just need to put everything back, which is just putting the board down and closing it up. Be very, very careful now with this part not to, uh, to damage it. And you can pretty much just keep it together like that because that is actually how it goes. So now it's time to connect everything together. And that is done with these little connectors right here. So we can go ahead and slot the smallest one that you have in the kit into the motherboard, just like that. And that one just goes straight into the battery. So we can go ahead and just press that in. These go in just with pressure and then kind of click in a little bit. And there we go, we've already got one of them connected. So the keypad to the motherboard is the same length, it's just got four pins instead of two, and that just slots in to this side like so. So once you've plugged the keyboard one in, you can actually flip over the motherboard and then you can see here that they're all labeled underneath, which is rather convenient. So let's go ahead and plug the keyboard into the motherboard, which is quite a useful thing because we need to be able to control Mario and Link. 
We're really beginning to look more and more like a console at this point, which is rather exciting. So the speaker uses a slightly longer wire and just goes up into this corner right here, labeled speaker on the front of the, uh, the little box, which these all come in. And so you can just slide that in and press it in with your nail. And we're more or less all hooked up now. So once everything is all nice and tucked in, you can use your tweezers or just a little spudger just to push the, uh, the cables down. Included in the kit is a couple of these little rubber um, lugs kind of things, and they just slot into the side and keep all of the wires pushed down, which I think is a really, really neat and uh, tidy way of keeping everything nice and tidy and together. And you put those in all little four kind of corners Okay, and now it's time to remove the D-pad and buttons from there. Making sure that these are cleanly cut is probably one of the most important things uh, because if they're not, they won't press properly and they'll get stuck underneath and that is a uh, going to be quite unpleasant when you play games if your buttons get stuck so just be really really careful with that and then you can close this up finally uh, looking like a console now and once you close it up you'll notice that it doesn't stay shut so to close this up you take the little wheels and you pop them on the side and rotate it 90 degrees and it will just keep it all nice and closed up and then it's very easy as well to open it up again and uh, check it later on. Make sure you've clicked the bottom in, I didn't do that there. And there we go, we've now got our console ready pretty much to game on. So let's just check everything works by checking out one of the inbuilt games like Cave Story. We've got our speaker hopefully plugged in and our buttons, the button seems to work okay. And if we go ahead and press start, and there we go, everything does actually work. So what we're gonna do in the next episode is pop some more games on this thing. I'm super, super excited to get this thing going. Um, it looks absolutely fantastic. It's an excellent looking console. So I hope you guys have all enjoyed this video. This has been the uh, Game Shell by Clockwork Assembly. I'm super excited to get this thing um, fully up and run with all of my favorite games. We're gonna be checking out how to do that in the next video. So subscribe with notifications on and uh, that will keep you notified when the next video comes out. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.